Let's call the meeting to order, please, and rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Good morning. We will hop right into our agenda. First off, we need to approve the uh, council minutes from the January 3rd meetings. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Um, this morning, we are going to hear from Mark Shipman about the equitable sharing agreement. Morning. Hi. This is my annual trip over here uh, to get approval, request approval for the equitable sharing agreement that we have with the federal government. Uh, this is something that we've been doing for 20 years. Whenever there is a um, seizure of cash uh, on, typically on the interstate or some other major drug seizure with the federal government, uh, our office participates in that and. This program allows us to get a certain percentage of that money back that we then use for training and uh, equipment in our office. And some years we don't have any seizures. Other years we, we may have a couple. But um, each year I have to come over here and request approval from council and get a signature on this program so we can continue to participate in it. So I just request a signature from, um, and it says in here, the county council chairperson, but it would be from uh, President Leisure on this. I'd request a signature today. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. If not, I'll entertain a motion to allow me to sign the agreement. So moved. Second. Motion on a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Thank you. Thank you so much. And would you like that now or later? Sure, on? you can give it to us. We can see that you get it back if you want. Okay, yeah, or we fine. can sign it one you day. Can just take, you can just take it uh, and review it back here on the final. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. All right, next, our interlocal agreement for emergency communications <coughs> department. Anyone want to speak to this? The, the interlocal agreement, or this is the one between us and the city of Richmond. Hi. I know. I thought that's why Matthew was making. Hey, Matthew's here. I have some comments. If anybody shows, I guess it's me. Wait a minute. What we're talking about here? This is an annual agreement yeah. the city has for since we started the, the joint PSAP. The city has participated in funding this. Um, we have we continue to uh, work with them through the executive committee to to pull together the information, <clears throat> Matthew pulls together the information <laughs> that, Tammy. that they need. Okay. <laughs> Pass it on down the line. Somebody down, Somebody down the line together. pulls the information together on how much we spend. Uh, we had been, until last year, uh, estimating the worst case scenario to give them for their budgeting process. <coughs> Turns out that they prefer uh, the most likely scenario, and so the process has changed a little bit, and the numbers uh, are changing a little bit, but uh, we've the commissioners have have agreed to this, um, and and you're next on the list. And Matthew, if you want to add anything to that, no, not a whole lot to add. There's no change in the verbiage from last year's uh, interlocal agreement. Uh, it still covers the same employees, um, and they the city of Richmond is billed for the actual cost or the actual expenses for those salaries. Uh, for that month, it's a it's a month to month bill uh, that the city receives. Just so you okay. are reminded of that. I will comment that uh, I think you probably heard me say this last year that Wayne County uh, benefits from the willingness of the city of Richmond to enter into this interlocal agreement and to financially support the operation of the consolidated PSAP. Uh, that's not um, a um, common thing across the state. There's nothing in statute that requires a municipality to financially support uh, the operation of the PSAP um, and in Wayne County with uh, Richmond City Police and City Fire being the uh, largest customers and work effort uh, for the staff there. Uh, Richmond has always willingly stepped up and financially uh, 
contributed to, to your budget. And we definitely appreciate their capabilities. Mm -hmm. I think this is somewhat a product of how we went about putting this in place many, many years ago between the city and the county and the implementation <coughs> and all of that. It was a two-pronged process which brought in the, the other towns and the fire departments and so forth, but it was not an effort strictly at Wayne County to put this in place. I'm glad that still happened. Yeah. Late 90s, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Late 90s. Um, in the, it, she knows exactly the date. Okay. <laughs> Mother's Day, 1990s. Oh, there you go. I, I knew it was okay. earlier than the late 90s, yes. And then we have a tremendous staff down there. You know, they've, they've gone through some tragic events in the last 12 months. Um, yes. and Matthew and Aaron have a tremendous workforce, a steady workforce. Uh, they're, again, not common across the state. And we appreciate the work that you do. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Otherwise, um, I would just need a motion to allow me to sign this agreement with the city. So moved. I'll second that. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? There are none. Motion passes. We will sign that and get that back to the proper people. Okay. Next, um, in January, we were, we were, um, told by DLGF that we needed to deappropriate $1.442 million from our budget. And we took that action, but actually um, there was one wrong word in the resolution. So we need to do that again. So right now I'm going to open a public hearing and take any comments or questions over this action. And if there are none, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? There are none. So now we just need to um, vote to accept resolution 2024-01 that is directing the adjustment of the advertised 2024 budget in the amount of $1.5 million. Moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? There are none. I think we just. Did you give me three copies of that? There's three copies to be signed. You guys all go ahead and sign those, and then we will um, get those in a minute. Okay. Next up, um, we have Ritter Strategic Service Contract. Um, we are fortunate to have Barry on our council, and um, he cares about this county and cares about what happens here, and, and I'm pleased to have him explain the next phase of the service contract that we have coming up. Yeah, I think that, uh, thanks Beth, I appreciate those comments. Um, you know, I became the public safety consultant for Wayne County back in 2021 before I was a council member. I just so happened to be elected after um, I started doing some work for the county um, and we've addressed that through legal counsel and my ability to continue serving. Um, we just delivered the uh, first phase of this um, emergency communication system um, report to the commissioners uh, a few weeks ago uh, that my team identified uh, the deficiencies in uh, the radio systems and uh, made recommendations for the county to consider moving forward to improve uh, radio communications issues that we've suffered with for a number of years. Um, commissioners accepted uh, those recommendations and um, my understanding has Proved us moving forward with the um, actual work. Uh, I will note for those um, watching by TV and, and the general public that the headline in the uh, Western Wayne News that, that says that the county is going to spend $260,000 to study the options uh, is not an accurate statement. We've studied the options, we've presented the options to the county, 
And then this next phase of work is the actual work, uh, working with the contractors, uh, specifications, installation of equipment, testing of equipment, and deployment of equipment uh, that at the end of this next phase uh, would improve uh, public safety communications. And so, um, interestingly, um, as we begin to put this together, <clears throat> Matthew and, and my team have had some uh, uh, wonderful kickoff um, discussions with the state. We think we've identified uh, cost savings in the overall project, not only this particular scope of work that's before you, uh, but in the um, deployment of equipment and equipping first responders with uh, mobiles and portables. Um, I think we're going to be able to rely upon the state's QPA, uh, Qualified Purchasing Agreements, uh, that'll save the, uh, the county money uh, in achieving that, that level of communications. So, um, the scope that's before you uh, is a worst case scenario. In phase one, we did come in under budget, um, and I would anticipate that in this next phase, uh, we'll come in under budget as well, which means that we'll have the opportunity to redirect these monies to other projects that commissioners and council deem appropriate. We're prepared to move forward. I would be more than happy to answer any questions. Questions from anyone? Question for the commissioners. Considering the size of this agreement, um, is any thought put into bidding? We have discussed in the past whether we would bid um, some of these projects. It is a service contract, so it's, it's not statutorily required. Um, my feeling is we're very fortunate to have Ritter Strategic Services here. Um, they've been our, our go-to uh, folks for a few years now. Uh, Barry is recognized across the state as an expert in this area. You know, he, he headed our 911 department for several years. He uh, headed the state's uh, 911 programming. Uh, for several years before he went out on his own as a private contractor. Uh, again, after consulting with, with Ron, um, there's no need to uh, put this out for bid. Uh, after consulting with Matthew, uh, there certainly are other contractors, but uh, across the state there have been some problems with other contractors that have ended in lawsuits, is my understanding. Uh, I think we made a sound decision this is a follow-on to the original 81,000-ish uh, 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 original contract to look at options. Um, so again, for all those reasons, I, I think we did not feel it was necessary uh, to take it out to bid. Uh, and we believe that, that with this new information and the direction that we're moving now, will be able to come in under uh, the 1.5 million uh, or very close to that that we have uh, allocated through the help program it, it's ARPA dollars that doesn't mean that we need to change our process this this is our process uh, and we did consult with the attorney and felt like this was the appropriate step to take I, and I have all the all the confidence in in Barry just the size of the payment and um, with him being on a on council I think probably the appropriate thing would would have been to, to bid in this situation I realize we're not required to do that uh, legally but for Barry and for everyone I think it just avoids the you know any appearance of impropriety I understand your position. I think we need to reiterate and be very clear that Barry's work does not include selling us any equipment. Correct. Selling equipment, things like that. It's all for technical support, developing of this specification for what we need and so forth. It's not a large ticket item that's going to eventually come out of this, of towers and or radios and all of that. Correct. 
And also he has recused himself from any voting on, on any of this. And Ron the the obvious, I think uh, the contract was entered into in 2021, which predates Barry's term on council. So, I mean, that's... Yeah. All right. So, um, do we need to approve that contract? Do you have that? Do I have the contract? Do we need to approve it? I don't, I don't think believe so. I think this is one of those situations where uh, the money is already appropriated, but yeah. we have tried uh, our very best to keep you all informed of decisions that are being made in how we're spending ARPA dollars. Uh, and, and this is one of those steps. Um, I'll give a report on some of the other things here in a little bit. Okay, I appreciate all the, uh, all the explanations. Okay, next, um, we've had a couple people lately, you know, there's a lot of uh, broadband expansion going on in our county, and we have had two different, um, we've had people asking for our support, and um, we have dealt with uh, with both with uh, charter and different ones on some of the expansions they've made, and now there's more money available, and we will be uh, we would like to enter into a letter oops, of support from council. Uh, council commissioners already sent their letter. Correct. And you have received this letter in your email, and I would just like. For us to just vote to sign this letter of support for broadband expansion in Wayne County. Move for approval. Second. And I think we need to point out this is not obligating us to the money. No. It's just in support of the They're seeking grants. This. Yes. And what they would like our support. So of course we support them to get a grant for this, not ask for money. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Motion passes. I will pass that for everyone to sign. Um, next, we have a letter that um, another support letter for the Ready 2.0 initiative. You want to talk about that? Yeah, if I could. Okay. Um, so, Ready 2.0 is another uh, another state program that will uh, provide funding for regions within the state uh, for economic development purposes. It's being spearheaded by the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. Uh, they are putting in another $500 million, as they did with Ready 1.0. Uh, the, the same eight counties that uh, we were a part of that applied for Ready 1.0 are working together to uh, put together an application for Ready 2.0. Um, if you haven't heard, uh, the Lilly Foundation has added another $250 million that will be a part of Ready 2.0. It will be uh, focused a little bit differently than the, the money from uh, the IEDC and from the state, uh, but we will have another opportunity to uh, uh, apply for additional funding then through the IEDC. <coughs> Uh, that will involve blight remediation and, and uh, quality of place kinds of projects. Um, this request comes to us from our eight county region uh, to put together a letter and, and the basic letter there is, is the, the form that they recommended. But in, in the second paragraph, um, I put together a, a couple of sentences of language that are really related just to Wayne County. Uh, and so what we're, what we're hoping, and the commissioners have not seen this, this just came to me late Friday and uh, been working on it since then. Uh, so you're seeing this for the first time. I apologize for that, but it is due by this Friday uh, back to them so that they can include it in their application. So uh, what I'm asking you and what I will be asking the commissioners uh, this afternoon is that we endorse this. Uh, I, I think, uh, I, I believe there won't be any opposition to this. I hope there won't be. Um, I think what you have in front of you should be two different letters. Uh, one that if you just have the one, we've got another one. We drafted actually three letters, one with signature lines just for the commissioners one with signature lines just for council, and one with 10 signature lines for everybody. 
I think that would be a powerful message if all 10 of us as a team uh, support this, uh, this application. Uh, I will tell you that the application this year is on general themes uh, rather than specific projects, although there's been um, an opportunity for a lot of folks to, to suggest projects. Uh, and the IEDC then will be working with our eight county region if we're selected, if we go farther forward in the process, uh, to identify projects. So the IEDC will be selecting projects. Right now they're looking at general themes of what is your plan, what kind of focus do you have, is it, is it downtown redevelopment, is it housing, is it a combination of, of things. Uh, is it amenities and so on? Uh, I've not seen the final application. I don't know that anybody outside of the committee has, has seen that. It is like Ready One, it's being spearheaded by the economic development corporations from each of the eight counties in our region. So, this is a general letter of support that uh, uh, I would ask you to approve, and I'll ask, uh, I'll ask the commissioners this afternoon when we meet. And actually, I did send this letter to council yesterday because like you said I could after you and I talked about doing right. this jointly. And so you did have this in your email. So it's not something that they that we've never seen. So if everybody got a chance to look at it. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the commissioners haven't I seen know. it yet. <laughs> I was in Indianapolis all day yeah. yesterday and get, in, get a chance to get it out to them. We have a rough high-level timeline of this process. Uh, generally speaking, in the next couple of weeks, the application is due. There's supposed to be uh, site visits and, and communications with IEDC, and there has been some of those already. Uh, a, a decision, as I understand it, uh, sometime this summer. Uh, you know, we still are, are working on uh, expending the money that came to us from Ready 1.0. So. There's a little bit of overlap here, uh, but I, I don't have the, all the dates in, in my head because it's something that the EDC really has been uh, directing. I don't, again, this doesn't commit us to anything, um, although you need to know that, that when the projects are selected, the state dollars are supposed to be a maximum of 20% of the total investment. There can be uh, local investment, local government, tax dollar, public investment of another 20%. Um, and, and then the idea is 60% of the investment will be private. The, the, as I understand it again, the <coughs> private investment and the uh, local public investment are kind of fungible. So if it's if it ends up being 70-10 or it ends up being you know, some other percentage, as long as the 20% from the state is all that's uh, a part of the final mix, there's some latitude. At least there was in Ready 1.0 and I'm told there would be for Ready 2.0. But there is uh, definitely a, a need to have discussion once the projects are identified of is there local uh, public investment, and if so, where does that come from? And uh, at this point, that's not been a, a real topic of discussion until the projects are identified. Jeff and I were both on a scoring committee, and, and it does look like there are some tangible housing projects, possibly, that would come out of that, and you know, housing has been a big need for a long time, so. But again, you never know, they may not get selected. Those were, as, as I understand it, of the ten, top 10 uh, scores in that scoring process on projects, two of those were, were Wayne County projects. But even though they're, they're uh, in the application, they will uh, refer to those projects, it is completely possible that the IEDC, IEDC will come in and say, you know, that those aren't the projects we want to fund. We want to fund this and that and the other thing. So 
uh, IUDC has been doing projects across the state that uh, have, uh, some have had very little uh, local input, others have had complete local input. So I, I don't know how this is going to shake out, but um, I think it's, it's certainly uh, an opportunity. As you know, there's been tens of millions of dollars that have been committed to uh, Richmond and Wayne County from various sources over the last uh, year or two, um, including the help commitments that we've made. Um, and so this is another opportunity that uh, I think we want to try to take advantage of. Thank you. Any more questions? If not, um, I, I'm happy that we're doing this jointly with the commissioners, and, and uh, I think it just shows the solidarity we have here in our county and what we work together. I'll take a motion for <coughs> us to uh, <coughs> sign this letter of support. You want to sign a letter of support from council and then the joint letter in case the commissioners don't go along with this today? That's why I had Bobby uh, to prepare multiple we, letters. We have high hopes that the commissioners <laughs> will be on board with this. I, I'll I can tell you, you either way you want to sign it, Jen. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> second. Motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Of course, we want to work together with you. Okay, now, the commissioners have given us a um, list of their recommendations for some of the ARPA expenditures, and uh, we've all had a chance to look over this list, and we are going to take these items one by one in the, the top section. We have three sections here. These are their recommendations at the top. The second one is this the still available money, the, those are just some placeholders. And the third one are some projects that um, <coughs> could, would normally have been spent out of county general, but we can use our ARPA dollars for these things. If I so, could make just a, a comment to that, because sure. again, uh, this is something that I just recently put together after talking to some of you. Um, I had some requests to put together a list of items. Uh, and remember that commitment of ARPA dollars has a timeline. It has to be committed contractually by the end of 2024. Uh, so after being asked, I put together this list. It is nothing more than possibilities of current projects that are underway um, that uh, will, I think, I'm pretty confident they'll be completed in 2024, that if we need to, we could spend ARPA dollars on these uh, and then save the money that was previously committed, whether it's in your uh, projects line item or in, in some other budget, mm -hmm. uh, and then those dollars uh, would not have a, a timeline associated with them. So we could work together to, to spend the, those dollars at a later date that if we don't meet the ARPA guidelines, that money goes back to the U.S. Treasury. So uh, I don't want that to happen. I know you all don't want that to happen. Um, but uh, you know, I think if we end up doing this and spending some money uh, of ARPA dollars on for example, the courthouse exterior, there's still $300,000 that we haven't yet paid on that project with the stonework. Um, so we could do that, uh, and that would free up the money that's already budgeted and appropriated for that uh, to be used on projects at a later date, even if it were next year or the year after that. So that's the, the genesis of that third area just to bring it up so you are all aware um, and and uh, what we really need you to look at is the recommendation that the commissioners have approved the only change to that section is the journey home uh, transitional housing project that had been up in that first list um, I have since talked to the director of the journey home uh, 
they had applied for funding from the federal government uh, to be able to expand into Wayne County. They did not receive that grant. Uh, they still want to talk to us about some, some programming that, uh, that they might be able to provide in Wayne County, but it would not be transitional housing. And so I moved that from the recommended line item down to the, the second category there so that we can, we can entertain that when we get additional information in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And keep in mind, you remember last year the whole painstaking process of having all the public meetings and, and uh, input sessions where people um, actually, the public told us what they would like to see and what they would like to have. So not everything is just going to be, uh, you know, repairing our buildings and things like that. These, these dollars are for all kinds of projects that came out of all those meetings. Okay. Before we go, yes. I'd like to address a little bit because Jeff, um, I was one that thought we needed to look at what monies we were going to spend in the next three years. Consider doing that so it takes some of it off the timeline, but but also um, if we were going to spend monies otherwise and we can use ARPA dollars if there are projects that are not ARPA related we have the ability to do that one of those was longevity pay which we've talked about for a long time and um, this is an opportunity for us to put some dollars away down here at the bottom uh, and I know this is I don't think you've talked to all the department heads if there's anything else or we have actually in fact you know okay. we we instituted department head and elected official meetings uh, department heads we meet with monthly elected officials we, we're meeting with quarterly we've had two of those sessions now uh, we started last fall and that was one of the questions we asked at those meetings is has anything changed do you need you know, any, do you have anything that ARPA dollars could support? Some of those you see right here, uh, and and others. There was one that uh, uh, the clerk had requested $150,000 for voting equipment. That came off the list because that's now been funded by the state and a, a grant uh, through the Secretary of State's office. So, uh, so we have absolutely reached out to all elected officials and department heads and asked them. That question: What do you see coming, and, and you know, do you want to uh, request ARPA funding for that? Right. right. Well, I, I think, in my opinion, that's the most important section um, of it. Um, you know, we've already also the fuel tanks that have to be re replaced. That is something that we uh, a half million dollars uh, that has already been approved. Correct. It's on the list anymore. And that'll be on our, our on our project report here in a little bit. But I, I think I think those type projects, if we want to look at some other things that are non ARPA, that is uh, important for us uh, to consider. Um, you know, some of these we've had a great deal of information about. Others, not so much. But the commissioners. Uh, have, um, you know, I'm, I'm not comfortable voting on all of these, and, and those that I'm not comfortable uh, voting on, I'm going to vote no, um, but, um, you know, if there's a broad consensus, um, you know, I, I think that's what we need to look at. So. You know, like I said, the, the projects down at the bottom, I think, are the ones that uh, totally make sense. It gives us flexibility. Um, whether we later fund a, a project that qualifies for ARPA, or whether we uh, are able to use those funds in a, in a manner that we wanted to for a long time. So. I could make Thank you. two quick comments to, to some of yours. Number one, um, I think 
we have discussed uh, many, many, many <coughs> times uh, that the majority want to focus the attention of these dollars on one-time expenditures, uh, and so we've, we've tried to do that here. Uh, the other would be uh, some of these, you, you're saying additional information, I agree with you, but you see the, the last uh, item in that, in that upper list is for engineering and contractual expenses. So we can't give you a lot more information unless we're able to hire somebody to, an architect or an engineer or somebody that can, can uh, do the, the plans, work with us on plans and, and getting estimates. So that's what that line item is, uh, is intended to do, to be able to give you additional information on some of these. Are we ready? Question. Okay. Please. The, um, Jeff, in the, the top list here in the recommendation, if there's one of those particular items that uh, council does not support in funding, what's your plan for those dollars? Uh, like anything else, if, if we don't spend money on this, we need to move it. It still has a deadline of December 31st of this year to be committed. So we'll, we'll present another idea. We'll uh, bring up something from the next category or the bottom category and we'll or say- get more information. Or get more information if that's, right. if mean, that's why you This isn't a, a drop dead vote. Mm -hmm. oh. Absolutely, yeah. and, I, and I understand that. And we're, we're trying to provide as much as we can. What we're trying to do is push this forward. You know, time is, is running out. We need to we need to push these things forward and at least know if if you have an objection to a particular project, what's the objection? Is it something that we can we can work through with more information as you just said? Or is it something that you just philosophically disagree with and, and we should scratch it off of our list. So <coughs> that way we'll know where we're at. As Barry alluded to a, a moment ago there are also going to be projects that we have a number here, $500,000, but it ends up costing $400,000. So that $100,000 is going to have to be reallocated and identified you know, before the end of the year. So we very well may need to spend more than the $12.78 million in ARPA that's allocated. And we can do that by uh, moving money from say it's currently allocated to the general fund, now we're spending out of ARPA, now we've got more money from ARPA that's committed than we before. So we can make those adjustments, we need to make those adjustments as we go along, but we also need to get moving. So we appreciate you looking at this today. That's the major point for today. We've got to get some things started and, and the engineering and things like that on some of the other projects. So. First up, uh, the hardscape, landscape, five hundred thousand. I mean, I would, I would approve that as an up to five hundred because we don't know what that's going to be yet. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know we've. It, it's not. This is not just plants and trees. This is changing the uh, entrance to the courthouse to make it handicap accessible and things like that. So, right now, we're not sure exactly what that's going to cost. Do we have a motion to approve that one? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, the new cabling for data and voice. That's a necessary evil of the times. It's been a long time since those things were updated and it's just an important thing to help our offices uh, function. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next up, the roofs at the fairgrounds on the um, First Bank Pullman Center and also the horse barn. That one is 300000 up to, you know, these are all. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I'm going to be, I'm going to make a motion to be in favor of that. I also want to look at the okay. master plan for the fairgrounds. Possibly moving the uh, horse arena and the horse barn. It's been talked about before, so I think we need to look at that master plan 
before we spent a lot of money on the horse barn up for space work could be decided to do, do something different there. So I'll, I will make a motion to approve that one. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up, there's 250000 for security issues and the Fox card um, locks. We've heard a lot of, about that in the last couple of years. It's part of the safety plan. Eliminates keys floating around. And, do we have a motion on that one? I would move that. Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up, the all-terrain uh, Bearcat vehicle for the Sheriff's Department. We've had presentations on this and we've all, I think some of us have all talked to people out in the public and, and uh, is there any other questions for the Sheriff or anybody else on this one? I have no motion to approve. Okay. Are you, Sorry, Max. No, that's all right. You said that's you have no other questions. No. Oh, what were you going to say? I was going to okay. make a statement about okay. this. Um, we've had a lot of information, discussed this a lot. I totally support our law enforcement. I just fail to see the need of having two of these in, in Wayne County. and uh, I, I just don't feel comfortable in that amount of money for this duplicated effort. So I, I will be opposing this particular line. Okay. okay. As well, so I have talked to a lot of different people and different walks of life and so forth. And for me, if I look at three hundred fifty thousand dollars, I think of it this way: you could go buy a really nice house for three hundred fifty thousand dollars, but can you pay for a life for three hundred fifty thousand dollars? I'm. That's kind of my scale. That's not everybody's, but. That's kind of the, the way I look at it, is I would hate to think that we didn't do that, even though the city may have one, doesn't mean it's available when we need it. But we all know how much easier a job is when you have the right tools to do the job. And when you're talking about somebody's life, whether it's one of our first responders or some lady and her kids that this person has broken into the house and they, they're holding them hostage, I just, I just don't know how you know, and that's my reasoning why if we get a motion, I would vote for it for that reason. I um, have dug into this very deeply. Um, I know we had a previous grant application um, and, and it was denied. Uh, we did not apply this last year. Um, and, um, you know, I think grant dollars, uh, receive grant dollars. I wouldn't, I would be all for it. Um, <coughs> we've gone years and years without a bear cat. The city of Richmond is acquiring one. One bear cat is better than none. Um, uh, Richmond obviously would have mutual aid. I know a question came up with how do we know that Richmond would respond? Um, I had one taxpayer uh, question why we were doing it. Um, and I, I gave them that as one of the reasons. Um, he pulled out his phone, called the chief of police. And the chief of police said, absolutely, we would respond. Um, you know, I've had people say, it's not Wayne County taxpayer dollars. Um, well, yes, it is, because the citizens of Wayne County do pay taxes to the federal government. Um, I, I've, I've had one council person say, it's just $350,000. Um, well, $350,000 is a big number to a lot of taxpayers. Um, and, you know, we don't prepare our budget um, and, and 
when we have limited dollars and say, well, let's do it because it's just $350,000. That's a lot of money. Um, Randolph County, I, you know, I, I raised the question, uh, or a question was raised to me, if Randolph County has a situation um, and they're down here, what are they going to do? That was at a public meeting and uh, nobody said anything, but we find out that Randolph County does have two uh, bear cats. And that was a little disturbing that that wasn't brought up uh, at the time because some people in the room did know that they had two uh, bear cats. Um, and then, you know, do we have to have the most, do we have to have a $350,000 bear cat? You know, what, what, uh, you know, are there other options? So, um, you know, for those, those reasons, I will be voting no on this. I guess oh, um, oh, go ahead. everyone else's uh, sure comments might be my motion yeah. was ahead of what you were <laughs> anticipating there, uh, but my motion stands, but my comments is, you know, I've, I've supported the, uh, the sheriff in his quest to purchase the Bearcat and appreciate the commissioners um, standing behind that. Um, you know, I, my career has been in public safety. I think this is a tool. It's an opportunity for us to obtain that tool. And if that tool is utilized to protect the life of, of any citizen, it doesn't have to be a law enforcement officer, or a paramedic, or an EMT, um, anyone in this room, um, I believe it's it's money well spent. Uh, I've made the comment, you know, it's kind of like a fire truck. You buy it, you hope you never have to use it. But in reality, we know we will. Um, and so um, if it's protecting uh, the lives of, or has the potential to protect lives, uh, that's why I've been uh, supportive of this and will vote for it. And I will say, the person who said it's just 350000 didn't say it's just 350000 in a flippant remark. That was, the remark was, it's 350000 out of $13 million we had to spend. That was the remark, and it wasn't to um, spend money unwisely out of this um i will say times have changed over the years and things are getting worse out there every day just the general public i deal with every day i cannot believe how people act <laughs> and, and that's in a calm setting it's not in a in a, a situation like the sheriff's department's in all the time and also this vehicle is all terrain and i think the city's vehicle is only a street vehicle that can make a difference when you're out in the county. So that's just a comment. But to me, I'm going to support this because I'm going to err, if it's an error, on the side of public safety. I have one quick question. I see the sheriff sitting there. Randy, did you tell us at one time, and I may have this confused, but if we went ahead and, and purchased the beer cat, you could still apply for a grant and then pay that money back or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So if we approved it, would you do that? Yes, ma'am. And can I clarify one thing only yeah, on the Please. Uh, I did want to say to uh, Mr. Gillum's point, the reason that we did not apply for that grant last year was there was a specific report that was provided to the federal government from the emergency management agency of this county uh, that uh, because uh, of certain circumstances within that report, that's one of the reasons that, that we were not approved the year before. And that uh, that, that item uh, in that report did not change the following year. So the outcome would have been exactly the same. Um, so I, I didn't feel like it was in the best interest of our, our time and, and uh, our tax dollars to, uh, to spend the resources to apply for that grant uh, if that, that had not changed. So uh, it was a great outcome. But I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, continue working with EMA uh, to see if those adjustments can be made and if it's all, at all possible uh, to uh, apply for and receive the, the funding for that. Uh, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. 
comments? Yeah, I haven't commented yet. Okay. I'm the only one that hasn't commented. <laughs> I, I uh, did talk to a lot of people on this. Uh, Bearcat, uh, after talking to Randy about this would be an all-terrain vehicle rather than a street-type vehicle, uh, the taxpayers out there feel like it. with today's society that it would be a great benefit to our county to have it. Uh, it's, Randy would apply for a grant, but this money here from the federal government is nothing but a grant itself. I mean, they throw this, throw this money out to everybody. And it's our tax dollars that they're doing it for our great grandkids' tax dollars that are paying for this. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, I, I feel like the comments I've had from the taxpayers that I've talked to, that I will have to support this. So I will second Murray's motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. And I think I'll just take a roll call vote because I know there's some yays and nays. So, um, Councilman Williams? Uh, yay. Mr. Saunders? Yay. Matt Smith? Nay. Gary? Yay. Mm -hmm. No. And my vote is yay. So the motion passes. Next up, we have the Creating Places funding for the non-health counts. You said, <laughs> I think that's a, ex, the explanation is good enough right there. It says the non-health counts, they did not participate in the health project with everyone else in the county. So do we well, have any questions or comments? I have a comment. I have trouble supporting this because those people had the opportunity to be involved in this. The money they was committing to this project was going to stay in their own community anyway. So he wasn't going to lose. He wasn't going to give that money to the county or anybody else. He was going to stay in their own community. So I have a problem uh, of supporting this one. Any other comments? If I could make one, quickly. You labor this point, but uh, just for your information, the Creating Places program is one that communities do not put money into. They raise funds. Um, this would allow the county to contribute to projects from non-health communities. Um, they would need to raise uh, money to match what would come from the state. It's uh, an opportunity, in my opinion, uh, to work more closely with some of those communities that were not able to or chose not to participate in help. And that's why the commissioners support it. And we're happy to hear your feelings on it. So, um, I know negative motions are kind of crazy. I don't know when what motion somebody's got to make on this if you, one. If you don't but, make a motion, then you have to tell the story yeah, anyway. So. Is there a motion? There is no motion, so that one dies. Next up, the solar speed signs for towns. I know some towns already have have their own. I'm not, I'm I'm not I don't mind some some towns getting this, but in all fairness, I'm not giving the other give the other towns the money back for the ones they already bought because they already had the money to buy them in the first place, but. Do we have a motion or do we not have a motion on the solar speed sign? You know, I think when we first we first talked about that, I was opposed to this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are, there are communities that have these speed limit signs that uh, they acquired them out of their, their, their own monies or however, but they have them. Um, and that, while I, I'm supportive of concept I don't always obey the speed limits um, <laughs> you know you know there's a big push by from NHTSA at the federal level in highway traffic safety and a lot of public safety dollars that we're going to see in the future is going to flow through NHTSA for highway traffic safety um, so lack of supporting this uh, is not a lack of encouraging those communities to take the initiative to do something on their own to protect their citizens. Um, 
and they have the option of doing that. So, is there a motion? Looks like we have no motion on that, so that one dies also. And next up, we have the engineering and contractual fees, and we that's almost necessary for the other things we've already approved. If we don't do this, they can't get started on things, so. I like motion we commit up to $100,000 on the engineering, engineering and contract with these. Second? Yes, second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Motion passes. Now, is there any, is there anything that um, we want to recommend back to the commissioners for approval? Like the list at the bottom or I, any other I, projects? I would recommend that uh, the highway department has uh, projects that they feel like they'll have to come up in the next few years. Uh, $1.286 billion of that 500,000 has already been committed. So that would leave seven, seven hundred eighty-six million or seven hundred eighty-six thousand dollars left, and I think we need to look at those projects, all those projects where we got this money to do it with, to so would that be taken out of general fund? You can see at the, the very last line item here is five hundred thousand for highway projects, which potentially could include uh, additional parking at the fairgrounds that, um, that they could do. The other thing I would direct your attention to that Mike called me yesterday when I was at the State House and said our, our next dump truck came in or is going to be delivered today. That's right. Wednesday. So that's 150000 uh, that in the last dump truck uh, I think December or November was paid out of Walmart. Uh, so this is another item that we actually, this is the only one that has urgency that need to decide today uh, and the commissioners again this is so new that the commissioners have a <coughs> position on this but if you were recommendation we could take it to the commissioners this afternoon to identify how we're going to pay for that to and, and as I understand th this is the last dump truck and it's on order but I mean there's not even any down the road until maybe 2030 I don't think it's that long. It's it's not. He hasn't requested any permission to new orders be placed. Remember that these things for the last three or four years, it's taken a long time to get a dump truck, longer than it takes to get a car, mm -hmm. uh, and that's been that time. So the, the dump trucks and heavy equipment are not part of the the, the task of management committee, so these are outside of the purview. It has been ordered and it's anticipated in the next month or two. We've got a call and it's going to be delivered today. I would make the, I'm going to make the motion that I believe that all of these projects at the bottom can add 150000 to the dump truck be approved. Okay, do we have a second? I would like to see that highway project increased. And I'm fine with that, Gary. I'd like to see that increase to 700, well, $786,000 anyway, maybe even a million dollars on that, because uh, we don't know exactly what the progress will cost. This is an estimated cost on that. I, I feel like it's so important that we get those projects done at the highways. I will revise my motion to include the projects at the bottom, increase the highway project uh, projects to a million, and include 150000 for the dump truck. Second that. Motion and a second. Any other questions? I have a comment. Just, a comment. <laughs> Just so you know that that amount is more than we have left in, in Harvard. Uh, let me rephrase that. Not more than we have left, but more than we have uncommitted. All that stuff in the middle is not committed. Correct. And so the uncommitted, if you look up at the top, you just committed everything here except 
two hundred thousand dollars. So that means so it's that two million total at the top. Is two million, which means that you're at two million three hundred thousand. You're increasing this one from five hundred thousand to one point five million. Is that what you said? No, one million. One million. One million. Okay, so two million. I, I apologize. You, there is enough money. Two million fifty. $236 would be that number that you're And this is a recommendation yeah. from us back to the commissioners, Understood. and so you can let us know how you Understood. build okay. out these things going yes. forward, too. So, yeah. so do you how much do we have for the ones in the middle? What do we have left for that? I'm in on the motion in second. Okay. That um, I can support Tony's motion. Um, Fund those at the bottom to supplant dollars out of the general fund um, with the pledge from council that we're going to pursue his initiative of the longevity. Uh, we have discussed the disparity in pay amongst employees. We have discussed the uh, um, difficulties in the um, wage and benefit um, in dealing with the recommendations out of the uh, Irwin. Um, and our limitations uh, in job classifications. Uh, I think this is an opportunity to be able to deal with some of that through a longevity program that uh, would give us some cash to consider that. And Barry and I have exchanged messages about that. And um, I would like, since I'm chairman of the personnel committee, to start having some deep discussions on these options and needs <laughs> too that what we would implement today or whatever activity <coughs> is an example idea. You can't, you can't use it all because that would be a hole in the budget in the future. Absolutely. Years. But you could you could get something started. So then my intention is that the personnel committee will start discussing these things and try to have some plans in place prior to uh, budget cycle mm -hmm. get that correct uh, I agree with Gary's comments on the highway equipment there's two or three items on there that are really critical the the next after the uh, fuel tanks which we've already committed to is a chloride tank that is over 40 years old that's could have some serious consequences environmentally if we don't get that replaced there's a couple other items on there that's really critical in the near term. Uh, they're all needed, and at some point we're going to have to address them. For instance, painting the building. It's been 25 more years since that was painted. That's got to be done here soon. Some other things out there on buildings and so forth that's got to happen uh, in the near future. So we need to seriously look at that. Mm -hmm. I would encourage the commissioners to discuss these items and then get back with us. And, we can start talking about what what is appropriate and what we, what we can do and what we can't. And keep in mind that um, even though we're spending these to save money in general fund, these are still ARPA dollars, and we have committed with the commissioners that we will agree on how they're all spent. So if we save that save that much money out of general, the commissioners have asked that we consult them also on the projects that we end up spending this money on ultimately. Does anybody have a problem with that? Okay. No more discussion. I'll second Tony's motion as amended. Can you tell your whole motion again, Tony? Uh, sure. Our recommendation would be to recommend the, the projects at the bottom of the page, changing the last line item, highway projects, including parking lot at the fairgrounds from 500,000 to a million and to add the new dump truck of 150,000 which just came in yesterday or is coming in the next few days. Okay. Do we have a second? Check you there. second that? All in favor? All uh, right. Any opposed? There are none. Just one final comment, if I could, on that. I was going to, oh, okay. It's time for your comments anyway. You got some more comments? Yeah, I just want to <laughs> remind you that the 
last section, it's my intention to simply put that in front of you today, not that you would make a recommendation. The commissioners, the other commissioners have not seen yeah. that list. We'll be discussing it and we'll get back with you uh, in the near future. Mr. Higginbotham. Good morning. Good morning. It's referring to your sheet that you see every two weeks. A couple changes since the last time you looked at this. Uh, the the uh, courthouse exterior, talking to the contractor, obviously when the weather starts to break, we'll start mobilizing again out here to finish that. So you look at it sometime in March before that starts. that you're probably looking at uh, middle of the summer before you start seeing a, another pay app towards that. Number five, the chamber remodeling. The uh, contractor did finish the bulkhead yesterday. It looks good. And uh, so the contractor's portion of this is finished. The technology person is not. Uh, I'll probably have a conversation with the commissioners today to see if we can change that relationship with that particular contractor. Uh, IT has uh, designated a person in their department to be able to on the software technology that's been used here so that we can transition over from that to that contractor to some, someone else. The uh, jail window replacement, the windows we call a number of months ago, we identified a number of windows that need to be replaced in the jail. These are the, the, uh, uh, the bulletproof type windows. They're not just your typical windows. That project's been finished, uh, ready to start on the next round. There are a couple of windows in the front of the jail that's behind that storefront window that you see from the street. You can't see them, but you, they're in the inside. Uh, so we're obtaining quotes on that. But the original specifications for the original contract that has been finished. The uh, health department awning that has materials been ordered for that. There's a six to eight week delivery time on that product. And then the uh, painting the prosecutor's front area that that project has been finished as well. First Bank Expo all HVAC, they've been working inside. Uh, they finished the installation of the duct work still online to have those outside units delivered on February 20th. Haven't heard anything different from that. The ejector pump panel, the EMA, uh, those parts have been ordered. Again, about a five to six week lead time on that uh, delivery. The annex ejector pump <coughs> panel, uh, same, same time frame, different product, but about the same time on delivery, and the same thing on the annex. Um, we are obtained a quote back to your point, Gary, on the horse bottom roof, and we'll also start discussion bring <coughs> the commissioners up to speed on, on what that uh, original plan called for on the location of the horse bottom and then the we'll, uh, fairgrounds committee to make a recommendation back. And then those numbers in the lower right-hand corner, those have changed in the last five to ten minutes. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> prior to your discussion, your that first number, that 1.3, is a number that you had committed already out of your one-time account. So um, I think I heard you move the jail roofs to the, to the ARPA fund. So, so that will reduce that committed amount. That's not fine. I understand. And then the, uh, <coughs> the uh, council one-time fund balance of 2.5. That includes the encumbered amount, the amount that was remaining after your fee appropriation, and the anticipation of the finance committee approving the transfer from the uh, fairgrounds uh, naming rights amount back into that fund. Does that make sense? And then the last number on the lower right hand corner is after you make that transfer of the payment for the furniture, that'll be what is remaining in the fair amount. Any 
question? Yeah, at this time for the additional. <coughs> no, the paragraphs committee will consider some ideas. We do have some ideas. Bring them back to commissioners for the recommendation. And that has to come back to you before we spend those five. Okay. Any other questions? More comments from the commissioners? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to uh, share the uh, new version of the spreadsheet that uh, passed out earlier. Uh, everyone's seeing this for the first time that uh, came together late last week. So on one side, uh, you have the help projects that we're uh, tracking the expenditures. On the other side, we have the non health projects. Obviously, it can be based on your actions today, and depending on what the commissioners do with some of those, uh, this will, this side will change the non health projects. But looking at the health projects, uh, I'm not seeing anything new here. Uh, we are in the implementation phase, so we'll, we'll start seeing significant amounts of, of these dollars expended in the next three to six months and we'll track this for you. So at this point, most of the uh, far right column will remain in balance is the same uh, as the project. And, uh, we'll continue to track that on a monthly basis and have that available. We to answer any questions that we have. At the bottom of that page, we have the uh, projects that had other funding uh, and this is uh, the emergency communications, the uh, initial phase that strate uh, strategic services did for us. Uh, it, was, uh, it was paid for out of, uh, actually it says general fund, but I think that was paid out of county edit, so maybe a correction we need to make. The same with what I mentioned, uh, consolidated in the county edit. This actually is a two-part project uh, that's <coughs> EDC and their board has approved and, the, and we have approved. So there's, uh, it's split evenly, 390,000 between consolidated edit and 390,000 uh, of county edit. There will be different rules uh, based on where the money is coming from. And so the recommendation is that towns that are participating in consolidated edit that are paying their money in the consolidated edit uh, would be eligible for this uh, this blight elimination program out of that pot of money. Uh, and the edit, uh, county edit would pay for the help communities and the unincorporated areas of the county, which is where the On the other side, I haven't looked at this uh, in detail since uh, since the decisions that, that you all have put forward, but uh, remember that the non-health projects include, and this is by year, so in 2022, we spent $425,875 on the for the sheriff. Uh, in 2023, we paid the community coordinator Scanning project, sheriff's vehicles were paid out of ARPA. Baker Tilly is our ARPA consultant, and we are working with them. In fact, uh, a lot of the uh, issues surrounding what we could spend ARPA dollars on that we just, the discussion we just had was based on a conversation that Beth and I and, and Ron had with Baker Tilly about allowable expenditures uh, based on the lost revenue portion of ARPA. So that lost revenue, the $10 million that we claim as lost revenue, is what makes uh, a lot of these expenditures possible. And when he said Beth and I, you mean Beth Beals. Uh, I'm sorry, Beth yeah. Beals, yeah. <laughs> Beth Beals, the community coordinator. Yes. Correct, correct. Uh, so, uh, then in 2024, uh, the Motorola radio programming, which 
was a, a requirement based on having purchased the radios in 2022. So we just paid for the programming of those radios uh, earlier this year. And it's not paid yet. No, there's no it's Okay, so that has been paid. And then the hybrid fuel tank uh, has been approved at 500,000. Uh, and then the un uncommitted ARPA funds, so you'll see that change as we put the updates in here. We'll, we'll put in the, the committed projects as they as they're committed to. Questions? We will uh, try to, by workshop, have some sense of where the commissioners are at with your recommendations from this morning. Uh, I, think, uh, I think there probably are, are some that we'll have some questions on, so we may want to have some further conversations. Uh, but uh, again, the the idea that Beth expressed that our position, uh, as we've discussed, and not actually adopted, uh, if there are funds that we replace general fund or other fund dollars with our <coughs> those purchases, uh, our position is that we should be involved in those conversations. If it gets to the point of the budget process, you all allocate the funding, uh, and usually we communicate, but we don't necessarily always agree. And the budget process is controlled by council. We want this to be collaborative, as the ARPA process is supposed to be, and so we want to make clear that, that we are deeply committed to this being a collaborative process going forward. So if we we take $2 million of ARPA and replace those expenditures that are currently committed out of general fund just to make it easier. Uh, we would like to be have a seat at the table as we discuss uh, how those dollars would be spent. So uh, if you need to talk through that further, if you have questions, let us know. Any questions? <coughs> One or two other points. I, I was at the Legislative Affairs uh, Committee, uh, the Association of Indiana Counties, I'm on the Legislative Affairs Committee we met yesterday. Uh, I then was able to uh, schedule a couple meetings at the State House, one of which was with the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, and Mrs. Rush talked about uh, funding for the courts. And in particular, uh, as Darren Dolahan retired last week, uh, I had a chance to talk to him. I asked him, what is the one issue that you uh, could have changed that uh, could really dramatically improve the court system? And his response to me was the salaries of the employees, which probably doesn't come as a surprise to any of you. But I did talk to, to Loretta Rush about uh, they have reports that come to them from the judges on the number of employees, the categories, and how much they're paid. Uh, I, I thought it would be an interesting thing to process to go through to get those reports from the courts, and they're going to send them to me, or at least a link to, to the web page, uh, and compare those to, to the numbers that Erwin is using. My assumption is they're going to be identical, uh, but uh, if they're not, it's, it's an additional piece of information that might be helpful as we get those issues going forward. So when I get that, I'll, I'll make sure that you all have access to that information as part of your process for Max in particular with personnel to make sure he has that information. Uh, any questions? Thank you very okay, much. Thank you. So, uh, does anybody else on council have any uh, comments? Reports? Okay, our next, our committee report. <coughs> just, <Okay. coughs> excuse me. <coughs> just a highlight here. ADC Monday, Monday evening approved the Wolverine Worldwide Lease Termination. Uh, there'll be a buyout on that. 
$89,500 from the Wolverine. And Bandor will be creating a new lease, I think. If everything goes right, that'll be completed, completed this week yet. So Bandor will be leasing that building to the road. I was on the news, and I thought maybe I better say something about it. So if I had any questions, well, that was part of, the, part of the program. Okay. So Council Commissioner Workshop is at 6 p.m. on February 21st and March 6th at 8 a.m. is our next council meeting. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.